Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Sustainable Fashion 101. Today's video is going to be about plant-derived fabrics or materials, though it's going to cover semi-synthetic as well as natural ones. And you all asked about so many of these that we're just gonna like boom, boom, boom right through them, get through as many as possible, give you the pros and cons, and just a little more information about each. For those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Jessica, also known as Chic Professor, and I make videos on luxury goods, sustainable fashion, and workwear. So this 101 series is all about just kind of general knowledge with sustainable fashion. And if you learn anything from this series, please do consider sharing the wealth with someone else because knowledge is wonderful, but knowledge doesn't mean anything if we can't spread it and continue the education. That's really what's gonna make a difference. So please do share this with someone. So let's go ahead and get started. We are gonna get started with rayon and basically everything that falls under the category of rayon, which is what most of you asked about. So rayon is a generic kind of family name for a group of fabrics that basically all come from a cellulose viscose. So they come from plants, but then they are semi-synthetic because they have to have chemicals that help make them into an actual fabric, unlike some natural materials. So viscose, which is called rayon in the US and is therefore confusing because rayon is also the category of fabrics, is one type of this and the most common type so the terms are a little bit confusing, but that is one fabric. The first one I want to talk about though is actually cupro. A couple of you asked about cupro. Cupro is short for cupromonium because it uses an ammonium type chemical to create it. And it's also often called Bemberg based off of the person who first created it. So it could be called Bemberg silk, Bemberg rayon, or cupro for short. So ammonia and copper are the chemicals again that are most used and those are not great. Those are definitely toxic chemicals and so that is where it gets the semi-synthetic and kind of bad rap. Rayon and viscose are the kind of the worst of the fabrics I'll be talking about today, but cupro can use a lot of really toxic chemicals. Where cupro comes that is pretty interesting and pretty cool and, and definitely more sustainable is that it comes from cotton waste. It's from this Thing we call cotton linter. It's basically the little teeny pieces of cotton that are kind of left over on the bud and that is used to create this. So even though it is the waste from cotton, it kind of feels like a silk. So it's definitely a really interesting fabric and there are some really great benefits for using this fabric. It's biodegradable, it's hypoallergenic, it's pretty easy to kind of use. It feels really cool against the skin and so it's a pretty nice fabric in terms of all things, though it does have a good amount of chemicals. It's also produced in a closed loop. It's one of two that we're talking about today that is. So even though these chemicals are used in the process, the chemicals can be extracted and then the water could be used again. So it's definitely a more sustainable option. So not only is it coming from waste and then the chemicals can be extracted and you're in this closed loop system, all of those are really big advantages to it being more sustainable. Disadvantages, it can be a little harder to care for. It's not quite as durable as a silk usually, and then it also can stain a little more easily. Um, it's, it's a little more expensive to create, but it's a pretty cool fabric, so that's cupra. Another fabric that falls in the rayon category is lyocell, and a few of you asked about tensile and lyocell. They're the same thing. It's called tensile lyocell, and tensile is just like a trade name that lyocell falls under. And lyocell is a pretty cool fabric. It's highly absorbent, so it's good for kind of a warm day sort of material. It's also generally thought of as the most environmentally friendly of all of the different rayons. It usually has the least amount of chemicals that are used to produce it compared to the other one. It's the other one that is made in the closed loop process, so there is a lot less waste, but it can still be used with harsher chemicals if someone's trying to produce it kind of cheaply and fast. There's not a huge amount of like certification that comes with it. So that's sort of the issue. And it's also one of the most expensive of the rayons. Modal is a trademark name and that comes from a specific company, the lensing company. And so they created Modal. Modal is not quite as great as Lyocell, but it still really can be really great. It's a very soft fabric. I really like Modal, but some people's skin don't react well to it, which is interesting because I have super sensitive skin, but uh, you can get kind of an allergic reaction to it if you're allergic to some like trees, plants, that sort of thing. It's usually made from beechwood and it's also very absorbent. So again, it's a really nice fabric for warm weather. It's not a great fabric for cool weather. It's not gonna keep you warm so much, but for warmer weather, it can be great. However, it does usually use more chemicals, it takes longer to biodegrade because of that. It can stretch out and it can pill a little bit more than some of the other fabrics. So it's, 
it's durable, but it's not necessarily as long lasting as some of the others. So viscose or viscose rayon, the issue with that is basically, right, again, so many more chemicals and uses a lot more waste to create it. It tends to be done kind of cheaply. And so even though it's a semi-synthetic and generally better than a typical synthetic, it can be made sustainably, but you're gonna find that less often. And if someone chooses to make viscose more sustainable, they're almost always going to use the lyocell process of doing that, which is the more sustainable alternative. So now for natural fabrics, it's going to get linen, which is made from flax. It's a very sustainable material, but it's not necessarily the best material. It's durable, it can be nice, but is usually very breathable and pretty biodegradable. Everyone knows linen creases really easily. It also, if you don't take care of it in the way that you wash it, it can wear and shrink very quickly. So those are kind of the biggest issues with linen. Cotton, I don't think we need to go into too much. Everyone knows cotton is this very breathable, great fabric, the fabric of our lives, but cotton is a water, just, they just drink it all up. They, they just love water. Water consumption is the biggest issue with cotton as well as pesticide use. Organic cotton is gonna be the better alternative in terms of pesticide, but cotton is still a very water thirsty plant and that is definitely an issue. Bamboo, on the other hand, uses less water. It can grow really fast, three to four feet a day, which is awesome. It can also be kind of this antimicrobial material. It is moisture wicking and then it also doesn't use as many pesticides as a cotton tends to. So bamboo can be a really nice alternative. It's certainly not perfect, but it's a good alternative. Issues with it are that it can be invasive and kind of take over the natural landscape. It can shrink a little more quickly than cotton and cotton can shrink if you don't wash it well. It wrinkles quicker than cotton does and a lot of other materials do. And it's not made in a closed loop process, so it definitely has some waste when it's actually made into the fabric. So bamboo is a great plant, but when it's actually made into the fabric, it can use some chemicals and it can have waste. So again, it's a regulation issue most of the time with bamboo. Certainly a good alternative, but not perfect. And then the last one is hemp, and hemp is thought to be the most sustainable material. It is rougher to the skin, so it's not as soft, it's not as luxurious of a material. When we think of hemp, we either think of like marijuana or we think of like big, loose, unflattering pieces of clothing. It's come a long way, it's definitely much better than that and it has a lot of great properties to it. it. It doesn't really use pesticides to grow it. Super biodegradable. The hemp plant when it's grown actually takes in a ton of CO2, so it's really good for its carbon footprint and just good for the environment in general. And it's breathable and durable, so all really good. But one of the issues comes with, again, the roughness of the fabric, the preconceptions around it, and understanding that people think it's like a hallucinogenic, which it's not. So there's some issues with that, but it's also, it's hard to grow because of different regulations. A lot of times because it's a pretty misunderstood fabric. So those are kind of some basics around these natural fabrics. If you want to know more about any of them, please do let me know. Please do share this with a friend. And thank you all so much for tuning into this series. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you in a future video. My next one is going to be about greenwashing, how I decide which brands are sustainable to me and that I want to support. So that's going to be next. And then I'm going to get into all the different luxury brands and how sustainable they are. Thank you all again for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.